came to the NPTEL online course on microelectronics uh, devices to circuits. We start today's lecture uh, uh, titled as CMOS inverter basics part 3. In our previous uh, module, we have learnt how an inverter works, what is the meaning of inverter which is basically a CMOS inverter and uh, uh, what do you mean by VIL, VIH, uh, NML, NMH. So, just to re refresh your memories, let me give you what the idea is. So, generally uh, we define two types of noise margin NMH and NML. So, NMH is defined as the high noise margin and it gives me an impression that uh, high noise margin primarily means that when your input is low right, and your output is high, then at that point of time that means, if your output is equals to 1, then how much amount of input right in the input side how much amount of noise can be given even without changing the output from 0 to 1 right from 1 to 0. So, let us suppose I have a VTC in this manner right we have already discussed this point in our previous slide in this manner then if you look very carefully then typically this much amount of input voltage even if I give uh, my output voltage will still uh, so if, if this is the input voltage I give my output will still be high. But yes, if I cross this value and go to this side, the output will fall dr drastically to this value and output will be equals to zero. So the high noise margin is defined as that value or that uh, voltage in the input side, maximum noise voltage which can be given so that my output does not change from one to zero, right? And therefore, higher the value of NMH or high noise margin, uh, better the design is. The ideal, uh, the ideal uh, value of your design uh, is something like this. It is like this. It is the ideal value which you see. This is VDD, right? This is your VDD by two, and this is also VDD. So this is your V out versus V in, and this is the profile which you get uh, for all practical purposes. You get the profile something like this which means that I will expect to see a switching at somewhere around VDD by 2. So, we define the switching threshold as or switching uh, switching uh, switching threshold switching threshold as as VDD by 2 right for the ideal case right. So, if you for ideal case and therefore, if you look very closely in the for ideal case N M H equals to N M L equals to VDD by 2 which means that the high noise margin and low noise margin are both equals to VDD by 2. Now, if you want to lower your VDD for whatever reasons, your noise margin will also be lowering itself automatically and therefore, uh, its property of rejection of noise will be compromised right. Uh, for example, if your VDD is 1 volt then NML NMH equal to 0.5, if it is now 0.5 then this will be 0 0.25 to 0.25 volts which primarily means that if a noise comes whose equivalent value of voltage is 0 0.25, I would expect to see output going from 1 to 0, what basically the idea is. We also saw in the previous discussion that for digital applications, we generally put it our we, we, we bias your device somewhere here or here right, whereas for analog applications we need to bias it here and at, at this place only I will get a gain, gain which is given as del of V out del of V in. Why? Because at this stage if you look very carefully at this stage, uh, my del V out is equals to 0 here, del V out is also equals to 0 here. So, gain will be 0 here, gain will be 0 here right. So, whenever you have this bias right, this and this the voltage gain is always equals to 0 and they are therefore, not used for analog applications whereas, this, this point is the point where you get a fast change in the output for a small change in the input and this is the point where you define your gain. Uh, to be there and if you want to bias it as an analog device, you need to bias it somewhere in this this region right. The problem with this region is that it is so unstable that for a small change in the input, I will see a large change in the output right and that is that makes it slightly unstable in design in from design or design aspect point of view. So, this is what we have learned, we have also learned how to calculate VIL input low, VIH input high similarly V O L output low and V O H output high right and similarly we also learned that if you subtract V O H from 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 V I L I automatically get N M H and so on and so forth right. We have already learned all these things. 
So, let me uh, let me uh, let me explain to you what are the various things which we will be doing today. We will be actually looking into what is known as a propagation delay, we will look into inverter capacitances, we will have a look at what is the optimized n mass by p mass ratio. So, that I get the minimum delay position available to me. Uh, we will look into the sizing of the inverter change uh, and then start with power dissipation, uh, dynamic power dissipation, leakage power dissipation, static power dissipation and power delay product. So, the first half of our lecture will be concentrating on the delay and the second half we will be concentrating on power. So, this will be power whereas, this will be delay. So, given a inverter, uh, given an in inverter uh, can I can I optimize its power and delay. So, that will be the major motivation behind this uh, module right and that will be the major motivation uh, for this uh, uh, for this uh, module of this lecture series. Uh, let me come to how, what is inverter delay. Now, you as, as I discussed with you on the earlier uh, slide or uh, the earlier uh, presentation that when my P mass is switched on and N mass is on right, my output actually falls to 0 right. So, we have already discussed this in our previous discussion in our previous slides that suppose I have got P mass right, I have got a P mass here and an N mass here right and this is my P mass and this is my gate. So, I give a 0, uh, I give a uh, I give a mass. let us suppose I initially at 0 here. So, when it is 0 this is on, this is off and this capacitor charges to 1 and therefore, output goes to 1 right this CH is charging. In the second half cycle in one, 0 to 1 this goes to off right this goes to on and therefore, this charge finds a discharging path to ground and therefore, this 1 goes to 0. This was there we define now therefore, two delays one is defined as the propagation delay low to high high to low and we also define low to high right. So, what is high to low when the output goes from 90 percent of high to 90 percent of low we define that too as a propagation delay of high to low right. So, T p h l is basically defined as T p is propagation delay and h l primarily meaning high to low right high to low means when the output goes from 1 to 0. So, so that is what we are what we are defining we define it we we, we are not deriving it deriving it here, but primarily this is what the equation is 0.69 r equivalent into C l. Now, what is r equivalent for example, in this case this is this is the high to low transition. Uh, R equivalent is nothing but the resistance offered by the P mass N mass inverter right in its on state. In its on state ideally it should be 0, but in reality it is never 0 because there will be some transit uh, resistance available to you. As a result there will be always T p H l will be always have some finite value equals to 0.69 R equivalent into C l, where C l is basically the load capacitance. So, so, this C load is basically your load capacitance right and R equivalent is given by this formula which you might have a look into it, but not very critical at this stage of time more important is this one. Similarly, when you are when you are discussing uh, output low to high then we get T p L h to be equals to low to high again the formula is 0 0.69 R equivalent p into C l. So, you see it is R equivalent n here because output is going from uh, 1 to 0 right 1 to 0 and it is equivalent p. So, it is going output is going from 0 to 1 right T p high to low. Overall uh, propagation delay the formula is something like this that you T p H l plus T p L h by 2. So, we average of these two we take out and we therefore, so this is common C l is common you take it outside and then R equivalent p plus R equivalent n by 2 right. Now, uh, the idea is that uh, uh, maybe we can discuss it here itself or maybe we will see later on, but if you if you if you if you if you look at the idea here and let us see what the idea is that if you want that T p H l if you do not want so, so T if you want this to be true that T p H l equals to T p L h which means that high to low propagation delay is exactly equals to low to high propagation delay. Then what should you do uh, then you should actually make your R equivalent n exactly equals to R equivalent p because C l in any case is equal right and that will make you equal equal propagation delay. But the problem is that holds mobility of charge carrier. So, what is uh, it is given as voltage by uh, so resistance will be voltage by current right applied voltage by current right. Now, current in a fed device if you remember by, by our previous discussion is equals to mu n C oxide W by L V G S minus V T H whole square something which means that the current is directly proportional to the mobility of the charge carriers. In case of in case of therefore, 
uh, uh, PMOS with the majority current carriers are holes. Holes have got a much lower mobility as compared to electrons and therefore, if you do not do any manipulation in the device structure or the or the circuit, uh, the current by the so if the aspect ratio of the device is same N MOS and PMOS is same W by L ratio is same voltage is also same. Then since the mobility of the charge carriers of hole is approximately 2 to 3 times smaller as compared to that of electrons my current will be also 2 to 3 times smaller and therefore, my resistance will be 2 to 3 times larger because it is inversely proportional to the current right. So, this is the problem area which you will face that if you do not do any 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 uh, manipulation uh, the value of a resistance will still remain the same right. So, this is the problem area uh, and the resistance will be different and therefore, T p h l will not be equal to T p l h. If you want to make them equal then the process which you should follow is something like this that try to make the as since your resistance is large R equivalent p is large you need to reduce it by how many times by approximately 3 times. How can you do that? If you if you if you if you make the width of my p mos 3 times larger right then the area actually becomes large and the resistance falls to one third of its value to the same value as p mos. So, therefore, if you want the T p h l must be equals to T p l h you have to simply make the p mos width approximately 3 times larger as compared to n mos and you automatically get the same values of T p h l equals to T p l h right. So, that is what I wanted to say that if your propagation delay is 1 then we have to make it this thing. This is also known as a skewed skewed transistor right skewed transistor. When you have skewed T p h l is equal to T p l h non skewed if you have got then T p uh, T p h l will be smaller as compared to T p l h. So, if you do not have any skew right then T p T p h l high to low will be smaller as compared to T p l h because this has got a higher resistance and therefore, higher current right. So, this is just for information sake a quite important one. Now, with this uh, we are going into now the transient analysis we have done the DC analysis of, of, of a CMOS inverter. We also wish to have a look into the transient analysis and to understand the transient analysis we actually have to look into the various capacitive models available within the CMOS inverter. What people generally have done over the years is that all the inverters right all the inverters they have taken all the capacitance together lumped it together and thrown in the output side and then they have assumed that the inverter itself is capacitance free right. So, the inverter capacitance is free of so the inverter is free of any capacitance and all the capacitance has been lumped together and it has been thrown in the output side as C L or whatever. But if you break it down then you see this is one inverter this is one inverter and driving another inverter here. So, let us suppose this is inverter inverter 1 and this is inverter and it is driving it right. So, you see this is drain to bulk capacitance you have gate to drain you have actually drain to bulk here and then drain to bulk here drain to bulk for N, uh, P, uh, N MOS and drain to bulk for P MOS this is gate to drain this this capacitance gate to drain right and this is also gate to drain. So, these two gate to sorry sorry this these two gate to drain together from C G D 1 2. Similarly, this you will have a gate capacitance here. So, only gate capacitance is right and this is gate capacitance falling down. So, this gate capacitance is appearing at this particular point this gate capacitance is appearing at this point right. So, when you lump this 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 and this together we get the load capacitance. So, that that is what I was saying that a CL the load capacitance can be broken down into following components C G D 1 2 which is this one gate to drain capacitance. C D B drain to bulk of 1 to 1 to this is this is this is the this is uh, your uh, uh, diffusion capacitance uh, sorry uh, depletion capacitances and this is your diffusion capacitances C W is basically the wiring capacitance. So, any wire uh, just like your R L C element can be broken down there will be a wiring capacitance there you will have C G 3 and 4 the gate capacitance of the fan out. So, this cell it is converted to inverter 2 this is inverter 3 here inverter 4 here. So, this is inverter 3 and inverter 4 then inverter 3 and 4 will have C G 5 6 C G 7 8 so on and so forth all will be added together to form the value of C L. So, C L consists of the previous stage diffusion and drift uh, depletion capacitance and the next stage gate capacitance plus the wiring capacitance. So, that takes care of approximately all the values of the uh, inverter capacitances. 
Now, how do you calculate therefore, the CGD uh, which is gate to drain capacitance right. How do you calculate CGD which is gate to drain capacitance here. Now, when M 1 and M 2 are either in saturation or in cutoff, now then, then you only have the CGD 1 gate to drain 1 right. Why, why is it true? Because if it is cut off uh, then obviously, there is no channel formation taking place. When there is saturation uh, the channel is formed, but it, it screens it screens of the depletion region from the gate region right. Only and that is the reason I am saying only gate to drain capacitance is CGD 1 right. So, CGD 1 is only available to you gate to drain whenever you want to cut off on the saturation region. Since the signal swing is opposite in both the terminals CGD is equal to 2 CGD 0 into W where CGD 0 is the overlap capacitance per unit width. So, you see uh, why we are multiplying it by 2 W or 2 into W because uh, it, since CGD 0 this CGD 0 is per unit width. So, if you multiply with width you get the total total capacitance and since you have two uh, two devices connected to the same input we multiply that by 2. So, so, overall CGD happens to be equal to 2 times CGD 0 right and, and, and the signal and the signal swing is opposite. So, when it when it is positive for P MOS it is negative for N MOS and vice versa right and so both will come out effective capacitance will be just double of that because they are they will be in uh, they will be in parallel to each other. Now, there are two. So, this was basically your drift uh, gate to drain capacitance. We also have drain to bulk right 1 and 2 and this is primarily because as we discussed in our previous term p n junction reverse bias right because of the p n junction reverse bias you will always have a capacitance between drain and bulk. And it is given as uh, C equivalent is equals to K equivalent to C j 0 where C j 0 is basically the junction capacitance and the 0 bias condition right and K is the multiplication factor. K multiplication factor depends upon how much amount of bias you have given in the input side. So, the first one is gate to drain the second one is a diffusion one. The gate to drain is a depletion one this is a diffusion one right. Diffusion primarily occurs because when P n junction is reversed bias the depletion region will be formed which depletion region will be uh, depending on the type of bias you have given and the level of the minority and majority current carriers available with you. Uh, now, to calculate wiring capacitance as I told to you is uh, due to length and width of interconnecting wires and, uh, uh, and also it depends upon how far how many fan outs are there. So, if your fan out is 4 then there will be 4 wires typically which will be emanating from the driver device onto the driven device and that will add up to the wire capacitance uh, there. So, larger the length more will be the capacitor. The gate capacitance C G 3 C G 4 comes out from the gate capacitance of the subsequent stage right and uh, therefore, fan out is equal to C gate into N MOS into C gate into P MOS. I think very simple and straightforward way of looking at it. C gate can be again broken down into two parts C G S O on N and C G D. So, so you see the, so the, the channel can be broken into two parts one contribution in between gate and source. So, that is this one in the on state and the overlap capacitances and then gate to drain overlap capacitance. For, so, this is O means overlap gate to source overlap capacitance for n channel and gate to drain for overlap for n channel. This is gate to source overlap p channel gate to drain overlap p channel right. So, this is basically the overlap channel this is also the overlap channel which you see and this one is primarily the gate oxide. So, when you so when you have plotted when you have actually drawn this. So, let me say you have drawn something like this and you have uh, this thing then it is something like this that this overlap here drain side and source side this is basically your. So, this this is actually your C G S O N and this is your C G uh, D N right D N D D 0 N N. So, that plus W N into L N means width of N MOS into length of N MOS since C oxide is the oxide per unit area multiply with that you get the total oxide. You add those two oxide and you get the total fan out oxide uh, which is available with you and it is quite a large sum which you see. Now, so, how to design a very good inverter? Uh, if you want to improve the speed of course, the best way to do that is reduce CL and this can be done by layouts. So, either by layout or by critical sizing of the transistors and you can reduce the value of CL. Uh, similarly, the idea was if you remember TPHL and TPLH was depending on the value of R equivalent N which means that the resistance offered by the transistor. In the first case when you are reducing C L right you, this can be so if you reduce C L obviously your tau reduces. Similarly, if you increase your transistor size uh, well that will make your R actually uh, go low right 
R go low. But when it R goes low, obviously your tau reduces and you can work at a much faster pace. But then we very careful about what is known as self loading, right? What is the meaning of self loading is that you are increasing your W, right? Fine. Why you are increasing your W? So that the area under the curve, area under the gate goes on increasing and you automatically have a smaller resistance available to you. But then what happens is that as you go on increasing the value of R, uh, W, you also tend to increase the capacitance of the gate. So, gate has to drive in a much better manner in order to invert the channel and therefore, you are actually the first point is neglected and you are not able to reduce the value of C L, your C L value starts to rise again because your W has increased drastically. This is known as self loading, right. Uh, why should you increase V D D? Very important that uh, if you increase V D D for the same amount of charges, the current will be large. You got the point. So, if the current is large, I D is large, uh, then your charging and discharging process can be uh, done much faster, right? Because for the same amount of time, more charge will be collected or discharged if I D is typically very large and tau therefore reduces. So, therefore, if you want to increase the speed, three things reduce capacitive loading, increase the transistor siding, sizing by increasing the W, w ratio, W width and, and then increase V D D. But if you increase V D D, you will have also higher power dissipation in a much larger manner and so power dissipation will be much larger in that case, right. Okay. Let me see the optimal value for NMOS to PMOS ratio. Uh, now, as I discussed with you while improving the PMOS width, right, improving the PMOS width improves TPLH low to high. If you increase PMOS width, TPLH will go on reducing uh, by increasing the charging current as I discussed with you, but it also degrades TPHL by causing a large parasitic capacitances. Why? Because as you go on increasing the PMOS width, right, the PMOS itself might be doing very good, but then it will start loading your external load capacitance. So, so the load capacitance will be parasitic capacitance will be larger and larger. So, at one hand you are actually reducing the value of R equivalent P, but at the same instant of time your capacitance is going on increasing. So, so, so we do not know exactly whether it will be always a win-win situation. So, you need to optimize it. Now, if the optimizing ratio beta is given by W by L of P upon W by L of N, we know that C L is given by D P L 1 D N 2 plus G P 2 G N 2 plus wire. So, this is your uh, gate gate of the second fan out transistor and this is your D P D N of the first transistor and this is the wire transistor, where C D P 1 is beta times C D N 1. Why? Because the ratio if you look at the beta ratio, beta ratio is given as so if L is constant it is nothing but W P by W n right. So, if so, so if you want to find out C D P, C D P 1 will be approximately equals to W n times right or maybe beta times C D n 1 right. So, if this is nothing but B develop W P by W n right and therefore, you can automatically say that uh, this holds good which means that the output capacitance will be approximately equals to beta times C D n 1 and C G P will be approximately equals to C G N 1 right. So, this is drain. So, this is C D P 1 means uh, this is basically your depletion capacitance of P MOS 1 will be beta times C depletion capacitance of 1 because width has increased by beta times. Similarly, gate capacitance of the second case will be approximately beta times because you see capacitance is directly proportional to the width and therefore, you directly multiply. So, if you look at C L and if you if you just put this into this formula i get 1 plus beta times cdn1 cgn plus cbn2 now if you if you ta tp will if you find out 0.6n by 2 1 plus beta because remember it was cl so this is cl this is cl the cl comes here and into r equivalent b plus r equivalent p by beta you understand why it is by beta because you actually multiplied uh, this beta ratio by this thing which means that beta is equals to wp by wn so, higher the value of beta when you add it you will divide it by beta right and therefore, you get T p equals to r equivalent n plus e r equivalent q by beta. Now, if you if you if you if you if you differentiate del tau p with respect to beta I get equals to 0 the optimal value of beta comes out to be this value where r where beta is w p by w n and r if you look is basically the ratio uh, which you see. Uh, r is basically the ratio which you which you will get this ratio r is basically your r equivalent p by r equivalent n is the ratio of r right. So, for a fixed value of r right 
wiring capacitance it depends upon the diffusion capacitance and the gate capacitance of the second one. And if you plot uh, the propagation delay with respect to beta, uh, we see that uh, somewhere near 2.5 to 2.5 of beta, uh, I will expect to see a Tp equals to 0. And this is also true from my previous understanding that if I am able to sustain the width of my P MOS 3 times more as compared to N MOS, I automatically get uh, a very reduced profile. Why does therefore, why can you uh, think about it, why with therefore, larger beta more than 2.5, I ac actually see a reduction in the value of T p. For a low value of beta, it is very simple. For low value of beta, uh, since my width of my P MOS is smaller as compared to N my N MOS, relatively smaller, I, it is not 3 times, it is less than 3 times. Therefore, uh, the, the, the mobility is so large, uh, so small that the current is very small and therefore, resistance is high and that is the reason you get a larger T p and you minimize somewhere around 2.5. Beyond 2.5, your actually T p H L, uh, your T p H L starts to grow, high to low goes, starts, goes, to, goes high and as a result the overall gain starts to, or overall delay starts to become larger. So, if you are biasing your device, please bias it in manner such that it is approximately equals to 2.5 to 3 times right. Let me come to the sizing of the inverter. The idea is for a given C L for, or a, for a given uh, load capacitance, uh, what is the minimum propagation delay right. Uh, how if you have a buffer means you have large 1, 2, 3 inverters right and therefore, you need to find out what are the optimum number of stages and what is the optimum N MOS to P MOS ratio. Uh, we, as we have discussed already that a load capacitance can be distributed by internal capacitance or intrinsic capacitance and external capacitance. So, this is primarily because of fan out, this is because of fan out and this is because of intrinsic output capacitance of the in inverter associated with the diffusion capacitance and so on and so forth. So, I get C L equals to C I n T plus C external right. So, propagation delay T p will be equals to 0 0.69 R equivalent to C internal plus C external, we have seen this point. If we take C internal as the output, then I get T p equals to 1 plus C external by C internal, where R equivalent is basically the equivalent resistance of the gate, whatever gate you are trying to use. So, the delay of the inverter itself is given by this value that T p 0 equals to 0 0.9 R equivalent to C internal and therefore, we replace this by T p 0. T p 0 understand that the inverter itself will have some intrinsic delay and that is given by 0 0.69 R equivalent to C internal and I get T p 0 C external by C internal. Now, <coughs> therefore, the sizing up an inverter will reduce its delay because its R is getting reduced, but at the same instant of time its input capacitance also increases. So, we are not very sure whether what is happening. So, there must be some optimal value of increase or the sizing of the inverter which will ensure me a minimum delay. Now, let us suppose my uh, uh, the, the input gate capacitance and intrinsic output capacitance obviously are the function of gate size. So, therefore, I say that C intrinsic is gamma times C g, where gamma is basically a proportionality factor depending upon the function of technology. So, whatever technology you want to use, you can use it. Therefore, I can safely write down T p to be equals to T p 0 1 plus f by gamma right. What is f? f is C external by C internal. So, by C this is C external by C internal is f right, f is C external divided by gamma if you write down, then I get T p equals to this, uh, this. Which, which means that, that the delay of an inverter is a function of external load and its internal capacity, intrinsic capacitance. So, uh, if, you, if you take an inverter right, then the, the, the delay of that inverter is basically a ratio between the external load C L load capacitance and its intrinsic capacitances. What are the intrinsic capacitance again diffusion capacitances, uh, gate to drain depletion capacitances, overlap capacitances so on and so forth. So, it depends upon the ratio of your output capacitance to input capacitance for a basic inverter. So, let us see how we can size an inverter chain. So, what we do is that we T p uh, which we say is a total delay is equal to T p 1 for the first gate, second gate so on and so forth till nth gate. For nth gate you go on adding all the delays together. So, T p therefore, will be given as uh, this quantity summation T p j j equals to 1 to n, whereas T p 0 is the intrinsic delay and summation 1 to n if you do it, we just saw that if you take for example, this, this uh, uh, inverter second inverter then 1 plus C g in means input gate capacitance of this one right divided by gamma times C g in of the previous one this one right and this is, so I get C g in 
n plus 1 equals to cl which means that the last capacitor here loading with a load capacitor cl fine so the delay therefore has got n minus 1 unknowns because there are n minus 1 transistors available to it we need to solve therefore del tp del cgi and may equate it to zero and if we do that we get something like this into our consideration that cj cgj plus 1 upon cgi equals to so i get cg right j plus 1 divided by cgi equals to cgi divided by cgj minus 1 so if you take cg if you want to find out cgi it is nothing but square root of cg j plus 1 multiplied by cg j minus 1 right so so if you want to find out the input gate capacitance of second one then find the geometric mean of the second first and third one right that is geometric mean you see square root of these gate capacitances if you are able to fix the value of second one such that the, it is a square root of the two subsequent ones we automatically get a uh, reduced factor we will take care of the next profile in the next subsequent lecture thank you very much